Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing another Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. This one was sent in by Thentox, and uh, it's a good one. It's a good one. This is fun. I like it. Um, here you can see he has a pretty mighty looking uh, horde of zombies here. Um, so this is very scary. He's against Bretonnia, and Bretonnia, they've, they've definitely got some weaknesses, I think, in this matchup. But the guy's got all of his bases covered. So it's going to be a cool one. Depth Guard. Depth Guard will chop through any of the infantry. Foot Squires will hold them up for quite some time. But they can't really kill quick enough. I mean, Depth Guard, they struggle against armor, but then Foot Squires aren't the most armored things in the world. I think it's 70? I don't know, I'll check in a bit. But anyway, uh, so Depth Guard can get some good damage in, uh, in kind, which is very scary. But they are very prone to archer fire, and if the Bretonnia player is clever, he's going to have a lot of archers. Also, though, there are a ton of gunnery mobs hanging around. Also, Lamprey's Revenge and Rotting uh, Promethean gunnery mobs. These are both superb against Bretonnia because they are so heavily armoured. They have armour piercing themselves. So if you do get, you know, things like questing knights on top of them, they can do a lot of damage in kind. And they've got to get through all the guns first. Also, there's a ton of, you know, just chaff here with the uh, pole arms. Again, you know, they've got the anti-large, the anti-armor, although they're not great at hitting things. They've got pretty rubbish melee stats. There's 120 of them in a unit, and they are very hard to kill quickly, so they can really hold up cavalry. So a lot of very awkward things to get through. Deckhands mobs in the middle, they'll basically just be a blockade. I mean, even men-at-arms can chop through them eventually, but... They're going to keep things at bay for a long time and let these depth guard get some serious killing done and all the gunnery mobs to get some re you know, really good killing done. And last but not least, we have Count Noctilus. Count Noctilus, I think, is just superb in this matchup. Those, you know, crazy quadruple cannons that he's got, uh, they just tear through cavalry so effectively. Huge missile damage, armor piercing, weapon strength isn't bad, but he doesn't really want to get caught up in melee. But he doesn't really have to, because he's got Captain Roth's Moon Dial, which is just hugely powerful, crazy range on this thing. Um, seeing Zomin uh, pirate deckhand mobs on top of stuff get in the way. Also, because he's a uh, Necrofex Colossus, I think he does actually have that other ability where they just sort of fall out of him. Um, yep, abandoned ship. So, um... <laughs> Fun, fun little anecdote. Uh, when when I first saw this stuff in Crea uh, Creative Assembly Studios, um, they said that the Necrofex Colossus would have an ability where it would just dump a load of bodies, right? And just a whole zombie pirate deckhand mob would spawn underneath it when it got damaged. I said, please tell me it's called Abandoned Ship. And, and he looked so pleased with himself, he's like, it is cool to bet and ship. It was amazing. So that was really funny. Um, so yeah, uh, great ability there. So it's just even more just chaff that you have to get through. And of course, he's got the Drowned Dead, so he can summon a ton of them anyway. And if you overcast this, they're going to get guns as well. Great for putting behind the enemy front line and having shoot into the back. And Invocation in the Heck. I mean, Laura Zombies are so powerful, so getting through any of this stuff is going to be so difficult with all the healing. So um, that's about it. That's about it for... Uh, for this army. Over here, you can see he's got um, the Bretonnia player. He's got a ton of human archers. These archers can get some good damage into all the chaff. They're not bad, and they cause some good distractions. You kind of have to react to them, or that damage will stack up. You know, they don't need the armor piercing against most of the units, so it's kind of handy to have. And yeah, just the mischief factor is hugely beneficial. Over here, though, you can see a load of men at arms and a load of foot squires. So, pretty solid front line. And thanks to the Grail Radicway, Terror isn't going to be a problem for this, uh, you know, for the center, which is very, very handy. You do not want your guys getting terrified away. You know, you want them to stay in the fight as long as possible to get through all those zombies. Also, here, two units of questing knights. Questing knights are great armor piercing, really useful against things like the, you know, rotting Prometheans. But you've got to get on top of them without taking too much gunfire, because these guys do not have shields, and the armor piercing bullets. It's almost all that damage is going to register. It's just going to cut through the armor. It's very tough, but they have great weapon strength, very, very good units. But they've got to get to their target, and that's the real problem. Over here, you also see some Knights Errant for some extra extra punch, something to charge into those zombies, help break them quicker, and let the you know huge amount of peasants get into the back line and start upsetting things. Also, he does have Peasant Bowmen with uh, Pox Arrows and some normal Peasant Bowmen as well, which is very, very useful. Poisoning things, always nice, and the Peasant Bowmen do have some alright armor piercing. It certainly adds up, but most of the time, you just want weight of fire, and that's a lot of Peasant Bowmen. So they're going to get some good work done. So, speeding things up. So, straight away, you can see fire coming in, but that's a miss, that's a miss. Uh, what's interesting about this map is the terrain is a little bit wibbly. Uh, Noctilus is in a beautiful position here, right on top of the tallest peak 
It's very, very handy. Um, it's something that a lot of people don't always consider when it comes to their lord, if he's got uh, a ranged attack. But having him up here, he's just got the perfect vantage point to be able to shoot at anything. It's going to be very difficult for any of these guys to get behind a ridge or something for cover. You know, it's, uh, it's a bit of a nightmare. If Noctilus was maybe here, you could hide <laughs> down this side a bit. Um, you know, there's ways to get in. But when he's up there, very, very useful. So you can see he's already trying to take out some of these questing knights, and he's taken out a lot of them very quickly. That thing's like a shotgun. It's scary. Anyway, Depth Guard charging in. They're going to get some great work done here against all the men at arms. That's going to be very scary. Archers starting to fire into the pirate um, zombie gunnery mob, which is definitely useful. But here, oh, I didn't mention these guys. The Black Spot, very great pick in this one because they got the armor-piercing missile damage, but if they do get caught up to, they have the armor-piercing and anti-large. They can actually fight cavalry and melee if they have to. You know, you don't really want them to be doing that, but that's great insurance. So back here, you can see the really armoured units are just soaking up a load of fire from all these skirmishers, which is a good use of them. In the front, you can see uh, Chalice of Potions, I think, is about to drop, which is really going to put these Depth Guard under a lot of pressure, and you really want to do that. So, boom, Questing Knights, they've charged into the front line, but I don't know. I don't know if it's worth charging them in the front line. I think you need to keep them in reserve, you know, to take out the Rotting Prometheans. Let the Archers deal with all the fodder. You know, let the Man at Arms and the Foot Squires deal with all the fodder. Keep the Questing Knights safe. You know, hide them down here or something. You know, out of the way of Noctilus. Just bring them in at the last minute, at the last second. Try and cut through everything without. You've got enough stuff distracting back here. You know, Knights Errant charging in the rear, helping cripple this stuff. And uh, Foot Squires, though, taking a lot of punishment. Right in the middle, very hard to tell how things are going, but that Earth Blood is keeping the Bretonians in the fight, and these Depth Guard are really suffering. But there is an implication in the heck as well down here. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention the Fey Enchantress. There's a Fey Enchantress, of course. Anyway, so constant healing going off on all of the units from both sides. Um, but, I mean, vampire units tend to win out when it comes to just pure healing, because of course they can resurrect models. So if any models are dead, for these uh, pesky mortals. They're not coming back. It's just going to be the models that remain. And that always puts them at disadvantage. Here though you can see the gunnery mobs are taking a stupid amount of damage from all these archers. Which is super useful. And questing knights are coming back. You can see they've taken a huge amount of damage. And more knights errant over there. Where are the other questing knights? Oh wow, they almost got wiped out too. So, see what I mean? You need these against the Prometheans. Because all of this archer fire is barely denting them. One invocation in the heck and all is forgiven. Here though you can see a uh, beautiful wraith storm coming in trying to help break this stuff you know depth guard nearly dead though depth guard are nearly dead on that side uh in the middle they're doing a lot better but they're near the healing cap but this is awful the fey enchantress don't let her get close to depth guard she only has 15 armor and that 70 weapon strength will cut her to ribbons uh speaking of being cut to ribbons these uh, knights errant are the next target Binoculus. He's been taking a silly amount of damage too, mind you. He's been taking an awful amount of hurt from all the archers too, but he can heal up a bit. You can see his healing cap, of course, which is definitely dangerous. Um, he's he's not out of the woods. This could be very bad for Noctilus. It could be very bad. Here you can see the rotting Prometheans though, the uh, Lampreys Revenge. They're charging into the rear and they are getting a huge amount of work done. In the front line, that Grail Reliquary isn't going to last long either with only 40 armor. You know, now that he doesn't have many, many bodies helping him out here, it's just this one unit of foot squires. Only 26 remaining. These Depth Guard are going to chop through him pretty quickly. Not many Depth Guard left, but I wouldn't want to be the Reliquary there. That's a very useful tool. It's going to stop all of these incredibly injured units from, uh, from terrifying, if anything terrifying comes near. So uh, over on this side, you can see there's just so many bodies. So many bodies. A lot of them. So you can see he's regrouping. So Thentox is wise to regroup here. And all the archers are going to be shooting at Lamprey's Revenge. Uh, another Wraith Storm coming in for Fae Enchants, I believe. Nope, that's a regrowth to get a health back up. Wise move. So here you can see the Questing Knights finished off. They were just too weak before they got to fighting the Lamprey's Revenge. So they couldn't really do much. So here you can see Knights Errant trying to have a go. That charge bonus will help. But uh, again, the armor piercing for the Lamprey's Revenge and the crazy high armor is going to make it very difficult. Huge amount of fire on the boat. And even a heavily armored target you can kill eventually with enough arrows. And that is probably the biggest threat right now. So just an obscene amount of arrows. It is whittling them down a lot. But a nice invocation to heck. And again they're going to be in pretty good stead. So here you can see the Fey Enchantress even ran in for a go. I mean that armor piercing, who cares right? It just means they only have 62 weapon strength. It's not huge. It's not huge. I mean that's less than the Depth Guard and there's fewer models. So Fey Enchantress quite safe to fight that, so long as she doesn't get in range of all the guns and the Wraith Storm, um, that's not ideal 
for it at all. Over here, though, uh, you can see these other rotting Prometheans. They're being distracted. So Thentox really needs to just pull all of his units back together. It doesn't matter that these guys exist. If they come in range, one volley from any of the guns will get rid of them very effectively. So just get the rotting Prometheans in here, because there'll be no stopping them once they're in these lines. So you can see the uh, deckhand mob, they're charging in. Load more arrow fire on the guns. And uh, there's that invocation of the Hex, the, the Lamprey's Revenge. They're going to be nice and healthy again when they charge back in. I'll say that, not that healthy. Not that healthy. The archers definitely did a number on them. But, my god, it took a lot of effort. It took a lot of effort. But this is still looking fairly even. You can see, uh, you know, Fae Enchanter is still going. Um, I think all the Depth Guard are dead. So, no more... Oh, nope, there is one more unit there. But, I think he's crumbling. Uh, nope, that's not Depth Guard. I... my mistake. Anyway. Um, Challenge the Potions, trying to do some damage here. But, huge hit on the Fae Enchantress from uh, Count Noctilus. And the guns have managed to finish it off. So, there we go. The Shunasi broke everything crumbled, which uh, is insane. There's so many troops still alive, but they were just all so injured that just that one shock from having the Fae Enchantress break, everything followed suit. And that can often happen in these atricious fights. You know, the Lord is key, because once everything is that injured, you cannot afford the leadership penalty. So, Pyrrhic victory. So yeah, this was a nice one. I like this. Um, Rotting Prometheans just used to great effect. You know, the front line and the guns were able to deal with the front line and the cavalry rather nicely. And the Rotting Prometheans just kept that, you know, nonsense in the back line busy for a long time. It kept them off the softer targets, which was really good. And then once they finally did join the fight, um, it was very difficult. There were no tools left to stop them. You know, sure, the archers, but if they'd both come in in tandem, I mean, the archers just wouldn't have the damage output, you know? So that little regroup... And then the charge again at the end. Fae Enchantress, the only thing that could do any damage. She had to charge in to do what she could. And she just got gunned down. It was absolutely brutal. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, Foot Squires did pretty damn well. 142, 84, 70, uh, 79. These are some really good kills. Um, it's really good. Because you've got to remember, a couple of these were fighting Depth Guard for quite a long time. So it's pretty impressive that they managed to put that much work in. Because they're a lot cheaper than Depth Guard. Um, sure, a lot of those kills were probably the zombies. But fine, you know, the Depth Guard are dead. And that's the main thing. Because these are a big roadblock for that front line. But yeah, archers I think just did superbly. Um, you know, the men at arms, they did their job just adding numbers. You know, keeping some of the zombies at bay and cutting through a lot of them. Because look at this, I mean all the zombies were dead in the end really. So, um, you know, this Bretonia army I think is good. But I think it was those couple of mistakes that ruined it for him. I think it was, you know, letting the Fae Enchantress get gunned down and letting the Questing Knights get killed before they were needed. Um, I think that is the biggest problem, is the Questing Knights... They never got a chance to fight on even terms against the thing they needed to be there for. And that's where it fell apart, I think. I mean, Thentox did great screening things, keeping the uh, Prometheans safe. Really nice targeting, you know, making sure Noctilus was making the best use of his artillery to make sure he was hitting the healthiest units all the time, to make sure he could break through all the cavalry. And then, finally, finish off the Fae Enchantress. So this was really well played. But uh, unfortunately, I think it was just down to those mistakes. I think uh, Thentox would have had a much tougher time if those questing knights had survived later on, I think. But um, you never know. You never know. Uh, but yeah, beautifully played, Thentox. Love this game. So, uh, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.